So you can actually start to change your mineral uh, when you're working with these companies according to stage of uh, lactation, stage of pregnancy, and uh, uh, really start to target the mineral needs of your herd. The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Um, I think that when, when, it looks, when, when you look at mineral requirements, and it's really the same as um, energy requirements of the cow or protein requirements of the cow, you have to recognize that requirements change with the calendar year, the stage of pregnancy of the cow. Okay? So there's two real critical periods and that's probably the 60 days prior to calving and the time period from the onset of, uh, or, or from calving, the onset of lactation through to breeding, okay? And so there, that is a critical period. And then basically we have the rest of the year, okay? And uh, prior to calving, mineral requirements are going to increase and they're going to increase because of the increased needs that the developing fetus is placing on the dam at, during that time period. So particularly the last six to eight weeks prior to calving, uh, fetal growth is uh, almost on an exponential basis in that time period. It's increasing very rapidly. So is the demand for energy, protein, as well as these uh, minerals that uh, are being transferred from the cow. Okay, so that's a critical period uh, and uh, we have to meet that. There's also that period uh, after calving, so for milk production, particularly for calcium, uh, there's uh, the cow is trying to not, not only supply milk to that calf, but she's trying to recover from calving, so uh, getting uh, the reproductive tract back into shape, uh, getting cycling again, and a lot of the trace minerals will come into play at that time period. So uh, that's very critical prior to calving and post calving. Okay. And that's where we really need to look at providing the appropriate mineral, uh, the appropriate uh, calcium phosphorus mineral in combination with the trace minerals. Uh, we may even need to go after calving uh, to some form of um, a chelated or an organic mineral to enhance availability, again, depending upon the producer's situation. Um, well, certainly the uh, amount of mineral that's required uh, potentially the ratio of mineral, potentially specific minerals uh, are going to change. So for example, as we approach calving, uh, magnesium uh, requirements uh, are going to increase, uh, calcium requirements are going to increase. Uh, so one of the things that you see in the industry, and a, and a number of companies offer this, is that they are now designing mineral programs where the uh, mineral that you're feeding will actually change with stage of gestation of the cow. So we can see uh, range minerals for uh, cows, non-lactating non cows that are out on pasture and into the fall. Uh, as we get closer to calving, they will have uh, uh, pre-calving minerals that uh, will have higher concentrations, for example, of magnesium. You might see higher levels of the trace minerals in, in, in that overall mineral mix. Uh, the appropriate calcium to phosphorus ratio depending upon the forage that you're using. And then as you move into uh, post-calving lactation and breeding, uh, and again, it will depend upon some of the issues with the producer, uh, but they will start to offer mineral mixes for that time period that again adjust uh, some of the major and the micro minerals, but they might also put in some of these organic minerals to enhance uh, uptake and to enhance digestion uh, to correct any deficiencies that, that may be present in that herd. So you can actually start to change your mineral uh, when you're working with these companies according to stage of uh, lactation, stage of pregnancy, and uh, uh, really start to target the mineral needs of your herd.
That's kind of an area of mineral nutrition I think that's probably most interesting because we can get into situations with mineral deficiency really from, from two points of view. Uh, the first is there's the deficiency in the forage itself. Okay, and so if we've got a low copper grass hay, for example, and more than likely that the soil that that, that uh, grass hay was grown on uh, was deficient in copper, and hence we have a deficiency. But the other area that can cause deficiencies is mineral to mineral interactions. And that's where we get into a situation where one mineral is present in the feed or in the water in excess, and that causes uh, interference with an absorption of another mineral. A classic case is molybdenum. Okay, so you can have high molybdenum levels in the soil and that gets transferred to, to the plant or to the forage that that uh, forage was, was uh, the soil from the soil the, the forage was grown on. And so we got high molybdenum forages and what high molybdenum does is it ties up copper very efficiently and makes it unavailable for absorption in the, in the gut of the animal. So you might have adequate levels of copper in the forage, but because there's also high molybdenum, you have a deficiency situation. And so when, when we look at an analysis, for example, a two to one ratio, uh, less than a two to one ratio of copper to molybdenum starts to trigger alarm bells in our minds, that we're gonna have to look at copper supplementation simply because that low, low ratio uh, will mean that molybdenum is tying up copper. We like to see that ratio five to one or greater. Okay, so we can see that. We can see the same thing with um, uh, sulfur. Sulfur will tie up copper. And a classic case is you've got high levels of sulfate in the water, perhaps at 1,500 or 2,000 parts per million. And that sulfate is contributing sulfur, which will tie up uh, copper in the gut of the animal lead to a deficiency. And then it even gets more trickier when you got high molybdenum, high sulfates, and low copper. All three of those work together to come up with a copper deficiency. So, so that's a classic case of interactions. You can also see it with zinc and copper. You can see it between calcium and phosphorus. The ratio of calcium to phosphorus is often uh, one and a half to two to one in a diet as termed ideal. If it starts to get down to one to one, then you're gonna have issues with absorption of those major minerals. Okay, so we, we look at those ratios pretty closely. And I'll give you one more example, and that's with potassium. High potassium forages, and they're very common, uh, can start to result in uh, situations where the magnesium gets tied up. And if magnesium is tied up, then that leads to, to uh, uh, grass staggers or hypomagnesic tetany in, in the cow herd. And that can be a pretty serious situation. So there's a ratio there called the tetany ratio there where we look at potassium in relationship to uh, calcium and magnesium. And again, through analysis of the forage, we can start to determine uh, how susceptible that cow herd is to uh, grass tetany, and we can do a similar type calculation uh, in response to milk fever uh, in cows as well. So those ratios are very important and the interactions between minerals are very important.